you've heard the media talk extensively about the wave of manufacturing line expansion, Taiwan Semiconductor, Intel, and Samsung are going to have to build to support these AI systems and AI packaging. By now, you've, you've definitely heard the media talk about the large manufacturing expansions that are underway from TSMC, from Samsung, from Intel, in support of building these AI systems and packaging these AI chips up for their customers. Hey everybody, welcome back to Chip Stock Investor. We're doing a roadshow episode today, and we're gonna be talking about Onto Innovation, a fab equipment maker that has had a really nice run up in the past few months. Onto Innovation is part of this wafer fab and chip packaging equipment, part of the semiconductor industry flow. That critical choke point here in the middle of the industry, think of these as like the gatekeepers to manufacturing chips. So Taiwan Semi, Samsung, Intel, Global Foundries, whoever, they all have to go through these fab companies if they want to actually make the chips. And Onto specifically falls into this metrology and PDC or process diagnostic and control subsegment of the manufacturing process for semiconductors. Casey put this chart together for us when we did our mega video and industry manual on semiconductor manufacturing a couple months ago. In this process diagnostic control or PDC on the right side of this chart, you see the behemoth KLA as well as applied materials and a small amount of ASML as well. But Onto Innovation, Camtech and Nova are all small cap companies that make equipment that test the wafers and the chips for defects. Those small companies, their market share is in that gray portion that we have circled at the top. So here's a breakdown of the metrology and PDC equipment makers. This is ordered in market share, excluding KLA and applied materials, the big equipment makers. Nick, tell us a little bit more about what types of metrology and this diagnostic control are available to chip makers. Yeah, there is a lot going on in this space. Just a very high level overview though. It depends on the type of chip, the type of process, used to make the chip or processes, I should say, to make the chip and ultimately what those chips are going to be used for that will ultimately dictate the type of metrology and PDC equipment. But some of the general types of technology that makes these metrology machines work, simple optical measurements using light to measure critical dimensions or CDs. There's also electron microscopy or basically really big, powerful electron microscopes that use beams of electrons to measure critical dimensions, atomic force microscopy, which uses a type of probe and scanner to measure those dimensions down to less than a nanometer. X-rays, of course, can be used to measure the internal structures of semiconductor wafers and chips and electrical metrology or a type of probe card, which make contact with the surface of the wafer to measure electrical conductivity properties. Now, a lot of what Onto Innovation provides falls into the optical and electron microscopy segments. There are some other metrology and PDC types as well. For example, Onto uh, has a whole line of equipment using optoacoustics, basically using sound waves to get internal measurements of structures inside of wafers. This is all highly technical stuff above our pay grade, but hopefully this just gives you a broad overview of the different types of metrology equipments that Onto, Nova, and Camtech, and some of their peers specialize in. Just remember that metrology basically means measuring stuff. Yeah, exactly. Okay, let's compare Onto Innovation with a few of its peers in regards to the stock price and the percentage change over the last year and a half. You may recall if you've been here since early on in the existence of this channel, we went shopping for Onto Innovation stock. Starting in February, 2023, we have highlighted here the massive return since then. I think since we actually made our initial purchase, it's more 160, 180%. We've nibbled a couple of times along the way. So I think our total return is more like 160%. And that's fantastic, except we actually missed the best performer of this group. Camtech. Yeah, that's pretty incredible. 385% in this last year and a half or so. But I think this 
really just illustrates well that all of these equipment providers have provided some very good returns. And it's interesting to see just in this very short span of time onto innovation in particular has skyrocket, skyrocketed out of borderline small cap territory and has really become a, a mid cap stock market cap of just under 11 billion. It's still a very distant third place behind Applied Materials and KLA Core. Nevertheless, it's been a pretty epic run. So let's talk about what happened, why the massive melt up for onto Nova and Camtech in particular. And let's focus on onto innovation, not just because it's our personal stock pick, but also because it's the largest of the three, let's say mid cap, small cap metrology plays. So onto innovation has made some lofty goals in the past, and they've talked about some of their differentiated products that are helping them reach those goals. You can see advanced nodes they have some products for as well as memory, high bandwidth memory. A lot of companies like NVIDIA or AMD requiring that high bandwidth memory stack for their accelerated computing chips, as well as advanced packaging to package those accelerated computing chips. Onto also has this specialty segment that focuses on automotive and power chips, performed particularly well through 2023. Remember the Automotive industry was still suffering from the chip shortage as late as summer 2023, about a year ago. Inventories finally started to catch up with automaker demands the second half of last year. So that segment has fallen off a bit. We've done plenty of updates on that, especially in relation to on Semiconductor and some of the other power chip companies, Texas Instruments. Check out some of those videos for an update on that. But what we've been seeing more as of late is now this big pivot back towards those advanced logic nodes and things like the high bandwidth memory, as well as the advanced packaging and chiplets technology needed to put all of those things together that you just mentioned, Casey. Two systems in particular that have been called out the last two quarters, Q4 2023 and Q1 2024, the Firefly G3 system, which is an optical inspection machine used for everything from advanced wafer manufacturing all the way to the advanced packaging, for example, fan out panel level packaging, and then the JetStep X500 system, which is used with lithography equipment. Of course, whenever you see lithography, you can insert ASML into that. So a lot of advanced manufacturing processes currently being developed surrounding ASML's high-end lithography equipment, like the high NA EUV machine, it could pave the way to lots of more chip performance innovation over the course of the next five years. Now, many of our viewers know that we really like companies that pair hardware and software together to make a very sticky business. And you can see over there on the right side that Onto does offer software solutions for their products. This is an interesting peculiarity, you can say, of the metrology and PDC part of the market. A lot of the equipment providers for semiconductor manufacturers have software bundled up with their products, with their equipment, but PDC and metrology especially is a, a type of analytics platform. And so software analytics, of course, is a massive segment of the IT industry overall. So this is actually a natural extension for a company like Onto Innovation. They have a very broad range of software that helps their manufacturing partners analyze what it is they're looking at. So this might be the actual process control. So a company, let's say Taiwan Semiconductor, is scaling up mass production of a new wafer and uh, chip assembly line, and they need to make sure that they're getting good yields. They could use the software in tandem with the equipment from Onto Innovation for that. Or maybe they're just now researching a brand new process to make sure that it works properly before they offer that to their design customers, like in NVIDIA or AMD. That's where metrology might help refine the actual process itself so that Taiwan Semi can get that process ready for future generations of, of chip designs. Let's go ahead and talk about the revenue for Onto Innovation. And this was taken from Q4 2023. You can see that on a year over year basis, they had a bit of a decrease in revenue at the end of 2023 compared to 2022. And you can see on the very far right of this chart, December 2022, that is the previous revenue peak of just over $1 billion. 
So ultimately, there is the big software component to onto innovation, but the business is ultimately tied to the cyclicality of manufacturing. So as we mentioned, 2023 was a down cycle for the semiconductor manufacturing space. A lot of companies pared back their purchases of equipment as they retooled their fabs for what's expected to be the next wave of growth starting the second half of this year and especially in 2025. So as those customers pared back their spending with onto innovation, you get that even deeper cut to profitability. The ultimate message that we tried to convey in quarters past with onto innovation is despite the deep, almost having a gap net income in 2023 compared to the peak of 2022, onto did remain profitable throughout the cycle by all metrics. In Q1 2024, that's the quarter that just ended and reported in May of this year. Revenue came in at 229 million and it was right around 219 million last quarter. So definite return to growth mode for onto. The expansions of that revenue was driven by high performance computing and high bandwidth memory, supporting the AI market growth. And this is what has investors so about these metrology companies, especially the small ones like Onto, Nova, and Camtech. By now, you've heard the media talk extensively about the wave of manufacturing line expansion, Taiwan Semiconductor, Intel, and Samsung are going to have to build to support these AI systems and AI packaging. By now, you've, you've definitely heard the media talk about the large manufacturing expansions that are underway from TSMC, from Samsung, from Intel, in support of building these AI systems and packaging these AI chips up for their customers. So of the 229 million in revenue in Q1 2024, Onto reported, obviously not record quarterly revenue, but they did report record revenue from those specialty and advanced packaging customers at 161 million. So as we showed you earlier, systems like the Dragonfly G3, that is what has a lot of investors optimistic that this next wave of growth for Onto is going to be quite substantial in support of all of this AI hardware R&D. This chart from our friends at FinChat helps illustrate where the revenue is coming from. Most of it, of course, from that systems and software. The services makes up a very small portion in orange and then parts in blue. But you can see that Onto is, had that peak in December 2022. And now we're returning to sequential growth. Another way of looking at that sequential growth, we are still lapping the last effects of the bear market from a year ago. On a year-over-year -year basis, trailing 12-month revenue still down 12%. But it appears, based on that Q1 2024 update, if you just annualize that number and factor for a bit of sequential growth along the way this year, Onto is not going to be too far off from their record revenue set last in 2022 at just over $1 billion. It looks like this company is going to get awful close to its all-time peak at some point this year, if not in early 2025. And based on the massive amount of chip fab construction projects underway, it could possibly just keep right on going through 2026 and through 2027. This headline showcasing some of the research from this article highlighting some of the research from industry advocate semi.org points towards chip fab and chip packaging equipment like onto innovation hitting record levels by the end of 2025 and 2026 and just continuing to soar through 2027 because there are dozens of new fabs and dozens more of existing fab expansions and upgrades underway to help support all of this new stuff going on, as well as a lot of electrification initiatives as well. In the past, that has meant electric vehicles in the automotive industry. But of course, with these AI systems, we have this expected surge in energy consumption in data centers. So electrification actually means more than just electric vehicles. The takeaway onto new record sales to these advanced and specialty chip makers looks like it's poised for a multi-run of growth. So this, of course, then begs the question, is Onto Innovation stock a buy right now? At the beginning of this year, we were a bit cautious, right? Yeah, it was definitely trading at a bit of a premium at the beginning of the year. 
you can see these calculations were at the beginning of 2024, 50 times expected 2024 earnings per share, 36 times expected 2024 free cash flow based on the stock price of around $181 and an enterprise value of $8.1 billion. Now, as of June 2024, the stock price is around $222 and the enterprise value is $10.2 billion, but the valuation is actually cheaper. 45 times expected earnings per share in 2024, 38 times expected 2024 free cash flow. And the reason for that is Wall Street keeps increasing its estimates for both earnings per share on a gap basis and free cash flow. And taking a look at some of these expectations, here's where those were three months ago, $3.59 expected in EPS, $222 million free cash flow. EPS ratcheted up quite a bit. $4.98 free cash flow up to $265 million. Not quite as aggressive an increase in expectations for, for free cash flow, but that's because, again, this is a manufacturing business onto going to have to spend some money to expand its equipment making capabilities to support its customers. But the takeaway here is this stock may not have been so expensive as we thought at the start of the year. And we certainly can't call it a cheap stock if we're looking at just the expectations for 2024, if they're to be believed. These do, by the way, jive roughly with what management has been signaling. I think these consensus estimates are going to ring true. But if we look into 2025 and beyond, this stock may not actually be all that egregiously overpriced. Now we have to answer the question, are we buying? We are at a full position, but again, that is because we bought during the bear market. We took a starter position in February, 2023. We made a couple of very small nibbles along the way. So what started out as a, a small starter position, roughly half a percent of our portfolio, up 160%, we now have a, a fairly sizable position in onto innovation at this point. So we're personally in wait and see mode. And let's see what management has to say during the Q2 update that will most likely come out in early August. So stay tuned for updates on this and other updates from the metrology market, the part of the semiconductor manufacturing space that we especially like. Thanks everyone for watching this episode of Chip Stock Investor. Make sure that subscribe button is pressed and you have notifications enabled so you don't miss a video. And check out our link below to our Semiconductor Insider membership. That's just $5 a month and gets you all of our show notes, published manuals, and access to a great Discord community. Do it. It's five bucks a month. This is where we normally put in like a value. Five bucks a month. You're probably spending five times that much paying off your smartphone every single month to your wireless provider. Five bucks is nothing a lot of value. Check it out below. We'll see you all again very soon at Chip Stock Investor.